guys, this is Zach from Watches On You, and today I'm going to be taking a look at our channel's first Luminox. This is the Luminox F22 Raptor Chronograph, and this is really one of Luminox's most high-end watches. They, it's definitely a lot higher quality than their cheaper plastic dive watches, not even close to that. So Luminox really spans a big range here. But, so now let's go into this watch. And actually the first thing I'd like to talk about is the box. Now, for a watch at the $1,000 price point, this box is absolutely fantastic. You can see it's got these screwed in hinges that just look stunning. I mean, you can see they're really polished well, and they just look very, very nice. You do not see a box like this on watches around this price point. And I think Luminox probably did that on purpose because many people know that they don't usually make watches this expensive. So they really want to show that they are capable of it, and they definitely did with this watch. So now let's go to the watch itself. So, the watch itself is done very well. You can see that it has a pretty decently militaristic or aviation inspired look, and that's really what they were going for because this was made in honor of the F-22 Raptor fighter jet, and that's why they in turn called it the F-22, obviously. So, but now I'm going to go over the case. So the case is a 44 millimeter titanium case, and it is almost entirely brushed, but that brushing is done very, very well, and you can really expect it to hold up nicely as well because of the titanium. Titanium is known to be extremely strong, but actually one other thing that it's known to also be is very light. And one thing I would like to say though is this is definitely one of the more hefty titanium watches I have held as usually they are very light and sometimes they can really even almost feel like plastic and I don't really necessarily like that so I like that this one is a bit heftier and I think a lot of that though is due to the big bracelet which I'm going to go into in a little bit. But moving back onto the case, you can see it's got these nice pushers that aren't your standard round pushers that stick out. They're nice molded to the case, look very great. So now on the other side you just see more brushing right there. And now the only two spots I have found polishing on this watch are on the edge of the bezel and on the inside of the lugs a little bit right there. So moving on to the bracelet though. This bracelet, I mean the second I saw it I could tell that it's very, very comfortable. You can see how many links it has and that really get, that when bracelets have a lot of links that usually means that they're going to be very comfortable on the wrist and especially with little hair pinching. So. Now the clasp also on this bracelet is very done very very well. You can see the engraved Luminox logo there. But I, what I really like is the bar clasp right there. No pressed metal. A lot of watches around the thousand dollar price point have pressed metal clasps, and I don't. I do not like that. I think if you're making a watch for a thousand dollars, it better have a good clasp like this. You better not to like kind of. You better not just let down on the clasp and do it to press metal. You definitely have the enough, you're definitely charging enough money to be able to wear it. You can make a clasp like this. And that's actually one thing I would say. I would say that this watch actually is built better than, say, a Tag Heuer Formula One Quartz, the entry level, or the entry level Quartz Longines Hydra Conquest. And now I know a lot of you might not really like that because this is Luminox and those are higher in brands, but. I'm, I think that's for sure the truth. I mean, this watch is built a lot better than I'm sure many people think, even because it's a Luminox, but they really did make this a nice quality piece. So now moving on to the dial. So as you can see, this is definitely a chronograph. You have the classic three sub-dials. And so now I'm going to go through their functions. So the right subdial at 3 o'clock, that is your running seconds subdial. Now I'm going to see if you can get the second hand there. You can see the second hand going around right there, tick, because this is a quartz movement, so it is going to tick. And then at your 6 o'clock, you have a tenth of a second subdial, so I'll show you that once I get the chronograph running. Then you have a big date at 6 o'clock, and that's very nice because with big dates it's a lot easier to read them. And then at 9 o'clock, you have your hours and minutes on the same dial. One hand is over the other, and you'll see once the chronograph starts running, which one's which. And it actually does say, though, both hour and minutes. You can see on the outer subdial there in the metal, that is actually the minutes, and the inner is the hours. Now, I almost wish that they flipped that, because the minutes is going to be a lot more useful in daily life, and the having the indication on the metal there is going to make it a bit harder to read. 
So I wish they actually would have flipped those, because the hours, you're not really ever going to be timing things over an hour, or you will be very rarely. So I think that would have been a good option if they switched that. But I will say about the metal ring, it makes the watch look very, very nice. I also like how they put a little metal accents around the other subdials as well. Looks nice as well, and I like how they did the big one on that. I mean, that's really just for reading purposes, but it also just gives the dial a little bit more of a unique look. So, now... Before I go on to demonstrating the movement in chronograph, I'll explain one more thing. So, as you can see on the chapter ring here, you have part of a slide rule, and then you have a slide rule bezel. Now, the bezel is titanium as well, except it is an aluminum insert. And the slide rule, I'm at, we're actually going to be making a video a little bit on the exact how to use a slide rule. And what that allows you to do is actually allows you to do many different complications. You can convert units, you can do multiplication, division, addition. It's actually a very, very useful tool, and pilots end up using them a lot for just in the cockpit complications, or in the cockpit calculations without needing a calculator. And the bezel, the way it works, is it's just. It's bi-directional, there are no clicks. It feels very nice, the very high quality movement. It doesn't. Um, really shake at all. It feels still feels nice in the hand. So moving on to the chronograph actual function. So to start the chronograph, on all, as on all chronographs, you're going to use the upper pusher and then you can see the second hand gets moving, the red second hand, so it's very easy to see and you can also see that tenth of a second dial down at six o'clock is going and I really actually like looking that, just looking at that, it's just kind of entertaining and also very useful. So one thing they also did, as you can see on the second hand there, is they put a little plane on the end again to add the avi aviation aspect to this piece. So now I'm going to stop the chronograph, and you can see that the tenth of a second stops right there. And that is one of the advantages of using a quartz chronograph over an automatic. I mean, I'd still obviously prefer an automatic, but a quartz will be a bit more accurate so they can get down to the tenth of a second when there are barely any automatic chronographs that can. I know there are a few, but almost all of them cannot. So resetting it there, you get this the smooth reset. It's not going to be like an automatic, so it's not going to fly back, but it still looks very nice, very high quality. And I should mention the movement is a Ronda movement. Those are very good quartz movements. They're the equivalent of ETA in the quartz movement market. They're Swiss, very high quality. So it's got that going for it as well. So moving now to the wrist shot. Now, the thing about this watch is, so 44 millimeter watch, I tend usually say that that is too big for a watch, but actually surprising, but surprisingly, this watch doesn't wear quite like a 40 mil, 44 millimeter watch. I've worn many 45, 44s, 43s. This wears almost more towards a 43, I'd say, because it doesn't have as thick of a bezel, and it looks very nice. The thickness is great, quintessential sport watch, so thickness, I'd say, about as thick as a Submariner, so it's not too thick, and it's also not too thin for a sports watch, really like that. So, taking it off the wrist now, oh, and actually, I should mention, when I put that on the wrist, I mean, the clasp, very, very comfortable, and it feel, I haven't felt any hair pinching with this as well. So, this watch overall is available for a retail price of $1,300. Now, you may say, whoa, that's way too much for a Luminox. I know I did when I actually first saw that, and then I put it, in, then I felt it, and I rethought that decision, and I'm like... I have felt $1,300 watches that feel a lot worse than this watch. And it is, it's really amazing how you take the low-end Luminoxes and then you compare them against this and it's like two totally different brands. I mean, I would have, if I were looking for a watch in that price range, I probably would have just glossed over this. But now that I've held it, honestly, I'd say this is actually one of your best options out there. I'd say, again, it is better than the Tag Heuer in quality-wise and a... Launch the Hydra Conquest, both the Formula One and the Hydra Conquest, just the quartz entry levels. And I really think that, and the 1300 price tag, just to let you know, that is, that's the retail. If you go to an AD, most of them will be willing to drop that price a decent amount. And also, if you want to cut some of the price tag off, you can lose about $200 off the price if you instead get either a leather band or a nylon strap instead of this titanium bracelet. But again, this titanium bracelet's very high quality, and that's for sure the most common option that they sell it with. So I actually would say go for the titanium, it is better. But if you do go for either another online dealer or a 
AD, they can for, uh, you can for sure get a better deal than thirteen hundred. That's I, I'd say that is a bit high for this watch. So, but once you, I've seen some of the other prices out there, and you can definitely find a fair price for this piece. So, again, overall, as a quartz chronograph around this price point, it is for sure one of your best options. You get the chronograph function, and it it does feel very high quality, as I said before. So, be sure to check this watch out if you're looking for a watch in that price range. And actually, I'll leave a link in the description to this watch. And actually, at the end here, I'd just like to give a quick thank you to our to Duke, he knows, well he knows who he is, he um, lent us this piece to review, it's one in his personal collection. So, thank you for watching this video, remember to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.